Hey, what's up, everybody? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Church Bulletin Podcast, and uh, it is the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time, uh, so we're excited to be here. I got to... Um, do you have your phone on you? I do, why? Because we got to look up the, uh, the Shore Faith. Oh. Yeah, I didn't print it. I figured if it's a digital bulletin, we should probably digitally look at it. You know, it makes sense. In my head at the time. <laughs> Uh, that. Anyway, and, uh, yeah, my, my daughter's in studio with us. She's playing a game on my phone, so I had it all queued up. And then as soon as we started, I was like, "Oh shoot, that's not going to work." That's so, fine. I'll bring it. Yeah, up. Um, we were just having fun uh, doing mic check. I had her help, and I was like, "So Amya, who's your favorite priest?" And she just went both, and I was like, "Good answer. Very smart." Yes, Very, always. Yeah, absolutely. Good. That's, good. Like, that's what a parent answers whenever exactly. you ask about Which their is your kids. favorite kid. All exactly. of them. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so we're just a hot mess today all over the place. I need to turn the camera. We're like off center and it's driving me crazy. Well, is it? Yeah. It is. <laughs> we're a little off center, Tim. We, yeah. <laughs> Left or right. There we go. Perfect. Stand up, sit down, fight, okay. fight, fight. Okay. Yeah. Bring like in my cheerleading like days. Like, <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like math. Stand up, sit down, stand up, <laughs> kneel down. All right. Well, here we go. We're not going to start it over. We no. could and look super professional or we could be humble. And just, and just know that we have to keep working on things. This is us, man. This is well, you know what? Let's just let's, just let's, like, just we'll just, let's do it right there. You said it. Honest to goodness. Let's so just go. I uh, so we the the saint uh, that is coming up in the children's bulletin is Saint mm -hmm. Jerome. Yeah, and he, he was known for his fierce temper and flair for sarcasm when defending the faith, mm. um, which just goes to prove that. Wait, even a saints Catholic had, was mean. A saint was mean or sarcastic. Oh, sarcastic. Yeah, yeah. I guess that happens. I guess there's hope for me then. <laughs> He's insensitive. <laughs> because if you know, you keep working on yes, things, right? And then we talk about that at Celebrate Recovery, too, to oh. keep working on things. Keep working on ourselves. Keep working on our relationships. Absolutely. Always know that we're children of God. We always say that, too. Mm. Um, yes. And, and whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. Yeah. So, welcome, children. Come welcome on. Children. Come on down to church. We just restarted uh, or started up um, Children's Liturgy again. Yeah. Attend... 10.30 mass, had a great little crowd Almost there. Almost 30 kids this past week. Yeah. And all of the bulletins on the side were gone, so I put out less because we don't have many kids, mm -hmm. 4.30, and yeah. they were all gone. <laughs> I had to make more That's on amazing. Sunday morning. So. That's what we like. So you know, what I think is for, funny, this yeah. is what scares me about children's liturgy just a little bit. Hmm. This past Sunday, I only recognized like half of them. Ooh. So I was sitting there like, where are the... <laughs> Where'd they go? I know that they'll be here. The ones that I that weren't there. So I'm like, oh, it's gonna be that chapel's gonna be packed. Miss Colleen just preaching the yeah. preaching the word to the kiddos. It's awesome. That's a wonderful um, job. And then uh, of course we have the children's um where is it? The yeah, here we go. For the Hispanic uh, Heritage Month, uh, we've got the kid version of Puerto of, Rico. Of Puerto Rico. So there's some great uh, facts, and I, I do. I I've learned a lot mm -hmm. reading in the in the regular bulletin. You know, this month some of the the facts and stuff. So please check that out. But I'm not gonna lie to you. The fun facts are in the children's bulletin. You the know, ones the, that I'm more interested in looking the, at her in here. And so. this is probably like not. Uh, this probably should be cut out then afterwards. But I'm gonna say it anyway. No, but every time nope. we talk about Puerto Rico, I just can't hear the West Side Story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry, we were, we were talking about <laughs> Colombia yesterday, you know, a little bit um, at the Faith Formation uh, Family Night kickoff, which was awesome, by the way. But uh, that's uh, Colombia is where Eric is from, correct? And that's also where, like, Encanto, I think, if I remember right, mm. is kind of from. It's that, I don't know. that part of South America. So, um, yeah, that's we were, a Sam question. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I've watched it so many times now. I can't can't remember. So anyway, maybe our director Amia could help us with that. Well, where maybe. does Encanto take place? Do you remember where Encanto happens? No. No. Okay. She's yeah, drawing a blank over there. That's okay. All right. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll like, figure it out we'll later. We'll figure it out. It's fine. We can do a we can do a, a thing next time. But yeah. Um, the bulletin cover. Bulletin covers like uh, it looks like a Bob Ross picture. Oh, it's no, not. No, it's it kind of does. There's no. There's no happy trees. Though. There are no happy trees. <laughs> we have a little tree. Right well, there. I mean, there are happy. Is that, are those trees? No, it is. Or? No, it's a mountain. The reason I said that is because it's like the typical like mountain scape with the yeah. thing, which I mean, yeah. So you can check that out. But uh, but this line I think is interesting. Uh, whoever is not against us is for us, um, and that of course uh, coming from the Sunday's gospel. Um, you have a couple of people who are driving out demons 
in Jesus's name, mm. but he they're not part of the disciples. And John is like, we tried to stop him. And Jesus is like, don't stop him. <laughs> and, he, and Jesus says, no one can do anything like great in my name or say anything negative about me while they're doing something good. Right. For you know, so um we had a great discussion at Bible study this morning just kind of about how like God, like even if and then in the first reading there's a couple guys who don't show up to something and God still does what he was going to do in and through them. So it's interesting how like even if like, you know, maybe we're not doing what we're supposed to do, God can still work through us. You know, it's it's really incredible. Um or if maybe there's someone who's different you know, or believes differently, God can still work through them. Uh, but we had a good discussion. It was intense. The readings this weekend are are intense. They're they're hardcore. So I should pay attention. Yeah, right. uh, they make you feel a little bit bad. Um, well, but they're be very two weeks in a row of that. They're though. very challenging. Um, this is where you know it's like if you cause a little one to sin, it'd be better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and tossed into the sea. Um, but the oh. but the end of it, it's that one. But then that goes into if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Um, and of course, I mean, if your hand is, lit- Gehenna, yeah, huh? exactly. It's better for you to enter eternal life without a hand than to, but I think what Jesus, the, my interpretation, or at least the interpretation that I was reading before Bible study was very much just like, what is it in your life that keeps you from love? You know, so for example, we have Celebrate Recovery tonight, you know, hurts, habits, hangups. Um, and really what, it, what I think Jesus is kind of getting at is, is there something in your life that is keeping you um, from being whole, you know, and if that thing is keeping you, like, it would be, it's better, like, it's better for you to not have that than to have it, you know, and then it really comes down to a crisis of faith, because we all have our, our things that we hold on to, and this is what we talked about this morning, we all have those things, whatever they are, and what's interesting about them is that there's, like, a crisis of faith, it's like, if I was to let this go, Mm -hmm. would God fill the void? You know, would, would he, like this thing that I think I need to feel loved, if I let that go, will Jesus love me? Or, or this, 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 you know, burden that I've been carrying, if I let that go, will, will Jesus sustain me? You know, like if I'm, if I'm publicly shamed maybe for, for something, will Jesus be with me. You know, there's there's that question. Um and I think that Jesus is kind of like, well, let it go and we'll see. <laughs> like, you know, he doesn't always move till after. So, um it's it's interesting when you think about it like it's almost like you have to let go of that and pick up your cross and it becomes like this like walk. And it's it's so anyway, it's a cool it's a cool set of readings, but but I think there's so much division in the world today. You know, the psalm really speaks to it then. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart, you know, which is not something that we think about. We like to think about, you know, different things that might give us joy that aren't, you know, the rules. <laughs> like, who wants to follow the rules? But that's just, there you go. Sorry, little long expose there on whatever. Um, okay. Father uh, Ross uh, is currently working on um, reorganizing page two into a much more readable thing. So this hopefully will be the last week with the current format. Um, so I'm excited for you all to see it. He was showing me a little bit about it, or a little bit of it this morning, and it looks so much better. <laughs> it's so much easier to read. So Good. Um, there's that. Thank you all who gave this past weekend. Um, this QR code does work in the bulletin, so if you do want to set up your online giving, scan that, and it will take you right there where you need to go. Mm-hmm. And um, just remember, um, if anybody is still using WeShare, I've tried to contact everybody. Oh, yes. Uh, WeShare is, is going to be ending here next week. So please when, uh, sign up you... for Flocknote. And if you have any questions or need help, please see Tim or I or give yeah. us a call and we'll help you walk you through it. Just to be, just to make it clear to people, when you say end, does that mean we're just kind of messing with people, hoping they'll switch to Flocknote? Or oh no, we we're paying for both services right now. So it, like when you say yeah. end, meaning that like we won't next be using week WeShare. it won't work. Right. It won't exist. Just making that clear for people. Yeah, we're not so. gonna have any. Yeah. So I guess we have a name discrepancy here. Uh, it says spaghetti dinner. It might be called that. It is spaghetti. It's not just pasta. It's like last year was pasta. No, but spaghetti are long, thin noodles. Pasta is yeah, but, not. Yeah, but I think we're actually having spaghetti this time. Oh. So. I, 
nothing's been. I, I don't know. Oh, I, I don't so know what that. that I don't Mr. know. I don't Mr. know. Mr. Dorenzio is talking to me. De Loretto. De Loretto, not Dorenzio. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Rich. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I guess that's to be determined. Well, though. anyway, it doesn't matter. The pasta spaghetti-ish Italian-themed meal that we do here at St. Jude's every year <laughs> is coming up, and we really need volunteers, like a lot, and we mm-hmm. also need donations. For baskets. So if you're watching this, is there anything else we need? Is that the main thing right now? Yeah, volunteers. Um, we we do say in the bulletin to sign up on Flock Note. I'm trying to get that figured mm, out. Yes. Um, there's uh, there's some areas that yeah. we need help with. So um, check that out. Give mm-hmm. me a call. Um, it's not going to fill up. So like, yeah, if you need to wait till it finishes, you can do that. Or call us, like you said, or come into the office, have a conversation, or send us an email. Whatever. Communicate with us. Um, um, one thing I do want to mention, though, yeah. moving back to the upcoming events. Oh, yeah. Next Tuesday, October 1st, mm-hmm. is f- is the food pantry over at St. Andrew. Um, so. Oh, I thought that was in there. Oh, I guess it got not. bumped. So Oops. anyway, but it's, un- and remember, <laughs> the food pantry is located at the St. Andrew yes. Annex or mm-hmm. in the church, uh, over across from the church. So. Yep. On, over on our the east side of our parish boundaries. Awesome. Mm. So yeah, But not all the way to the east side. Not no. all the way to the east side. Just a couple. Just yeah, a closer. A couple minute drive down the road. Mm-hmm. So be sure to check that out. Um, also, um, yeah, we got a bunch of stuff. Uh, the 12 is coming up this week, first one of the year. We're going to be walking through the New Testament, but also looking at it through kind of the... I wrote before the lens of St. Peter. It's more like the buffer of St. Peter. We're going to talk about how St. Peter heard things and then basically failed (laughs) at following through on them because we do the same thing. It's really easy to judge Peter, but uh, we're going to, we're going to, it's, it's going to, it's an interesting take. I'm excited to walk through it. I I've never done something like this before um, with such a focus on a character. So I'm really excited about that. Yes, they're all characters. They are all characters. Some of them are sarcastic like Mm. St. Jerome. Um, But yeah, so that's on Monday. Then of course, Tuesday uh, we've got um, the food pantry, and then faith formation uh, team training uh, for those who would be interested in helping out with youth. Um, we already have our team, but we can always have more. So if you're interested and want to learn more and want to come and sit in on that, you're welcome to do that. It's just the adults, so anyone can can come if you need to, if you would like to see uh, what we're doing. Wednesday is crazy, like always. Thursday we've got let's hang out, and then also the rosary over in the St. Andrew Church. Um, and, oh, next Friday is uh, Grandparents' Day over at the school, so the school mass is not on Wednesday. It's on Friday. Right. That's big. Um, and then Saturday and Sunday next week, we have the Pet Blessing. Yes, for the so, Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. I know yeah. I, I use St. Jerome instead of St. Francis this okay. time, but St. Francis gets a lot of credit, especially with a Pope being... <laughs> exactly, Pope Francis. Pope Francis. Yeah, you it's know. all right. It's cool. Um <laughs> Another volunteer opportunity we have coming up, um, or we have available. Um, so just pray on this, young people, um, couples, whoever w- want to like take on something that uh, allows you to be at church too um, mm-hmm. and be a part. Uh, this could be a whole family ministry. Yeah. Um, we now have the um, liturgical monitors in church, and we mm-hmm. would like people to possibly create the PowerPoint that you see every week. Um, you know, we put the music up and some of the prayers. Um, so if you're interested in any of that and then running it during mass also. Yeah. And then um, uh, if you are interested in that, mm-hmm. please uh, contact the deacon, Deacon Dick Brogdon. Oh, I just didn't one say. One of, one one of, of three. We got three deacons now, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then <laughs> also um, if you are a n- new fifth grader or mm-hmm. if there's, if you've been waiting to see, um, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, whatever graders you wanted to be, uh, if you were called to be an altar server. Mm. And then in high school, if somebody is called to step out of the altar server and moved into a new role, Mm -hmm. uh, we would love to train you to be a sacristan, to set up for masses and to prepare the altar. Mm -hmm. Um, Those are different different ministries that we have going on that are um, in need of some new volunteers. So Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and and yeah, so it's it's a... you know, it, it is it is a commitment, you know, the the screen thing. But, like, uh, you can be one just a part of it. You know, I, I heard Deacon Dick talking about how, um, you know, you could just be someone who helps create the slides, you know. And that that is a completely uh, remote situation. You don't have to necessarily be here to do that. Right. Um, as long as you, we, you have a laptop and 
um, and uh, internet, internet, mm-hmm. and the what's the program? The um, PowerPoint. PowerPoint. I almost said publisher. I'm like, it's not publisher. PowerPoint. You can create the slides there. Um, also, that or you could just be someone who just you know presses the button. Um, either way, you know, you could uh, we could have it easily have a youth. You know, if you want to, if you were coming, if you don't want to be a sacristan or a sacristan and come press the button, you know, to switch the monitors um, from slide to slide. Um, a thing about altar servers, um, and this isn't something that we talk about very much, but being an altar server uh, really is uh, such an incredible honor. You know, when like all of us in church are just, we're blessed to be there. Um, I think the priest. Uh, I forget which Eucharistic prayer it says that. It's like, you you count us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And all of us get to be there for that. Like, it's right. not like, you know, you're, you're a step up. But, like, you might notice that, aside from the random child who breaks away from their parent and gets up <laughs> on the altar, uh, most people uh, are down in the pews. Of course, actively participating, you know, full active participation. Um, but when you're an altar server... You know, you're right there, you know, and you really are an inspiration and a, and a guide uh, to anyone who might be coming to Mass for the first time in a long time or maybe for the first time ever. Right. You know, they see you sit down and stand up. They see where your eyes, you know, are, what you're focused on, how your posture is. It's a beautiful opportunity uh, to minister, especially and to lead by example at a young age. One of my favorite Bible verses growing up. Uh, is First Timothy four verse twelve? Which oh, because it's Timothy. <laughs> I mean, there is that sway for me. Okay. But, but the words of the scriptures are: um, Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the believers in faith, life, love, and purity. And what's interesting about it is, as an altar server, you get to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to be um, right up there where all the action is. But like. God, you know, really what we believe, pastor, or not pastor, wow, um, Rabbi Murray, when he was here this past weekend, which was awesome, but it was so cool. Um, when he was here, he talked about how the Jews believe that every Jew who has ever been was at Mount Sinai um, when God, you know, came down and the mountain like exploded and all that cool stuff. We believe the same thing at every mass. We believe that we are present to the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross. We're present at the resurrection. We're we're present to all of that stuff. That is the Paschal mystery. So with that said, you're right there. So as an altar, I just want to encourage you. I don't talk about it very much. Um, It's not really my monkey or my circus, but one of the main reasons that I was cat like stayed Catholic was some of the experiences that I had as an altar server as a kid. So if you're interested, um, even if you're like, you know what, I think mass is boring. Well, it can't be boring if you're doing something. <laughs> so it's a great way to to help change that mindset too. But please sign up to be an altar server. We need more. So you know, I'm just going to share a quick story. My daughter was the altar server. I wasn't allowed to be because girls weren't when mm. I was that age. Yeah. Um, it came to be whenever she actually was um, of age to okay. be that. So you know, it was always designed for the boys to look, you know, forward to hopefully mm-hmm. joining the priesthood or something. Sure. But um, for girls, it, you know, is newer. Mm-hmm. But she got to experience, um, but the year before her confirmation, she actually served with a bishop. And then she got a letter, a card back from the bishop to thank her for being there at confirmation. Wow. And then she continued on um, just, um, there was one service at Sacred Heart that she loved. And, uh, the pastoral associate would always call her for the past couple of years. And uh, there's two little boys that she's um, done youth ministry stuff with and that saw her, mm. ser- you know, yeah. serving in that little role. And they were so excited because it was Miss Sam's. In the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, little things like that. And then mm-hmm. she always still watches the altar servers. It's so funny during yep. mass. Oh, they're doing it. Yep. Every, <laughs> if you've ever been an altar server, you, you know, always I watch. I'm always sitting there. I mean, I was in a different state, different diocese. It's all the same. I'm still like, nope, that's not it. Nice try. <laughs> nice try. But that's the thing. I mean, you, like, I'll never forget. I mean, one of the greatest moments of my, of my life, of my faith, um, where I realized that Jesus has a sense of humor. Oh, yeah. On, was on the <laughs> altar. I was serving and I fell asleep during the homily. I was so tired. I had had like a soccer tournament <laughs> and I was in like a musical. So I was exhausted. And I'm like, I fell asleep. And Father Marv was his name. Father Marv sat down next to me and he 
he almost stood up to like start the creed, but he didn't. He like, hey Tim, <laughs> and I like, you know, come like wake up, and he goes, do you like my homily? And I was like, mm, sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> I said, I- I'm sorry, Father, I was asleep. He's like, I know, I was jealous. Should we start the creed, Tim? I'm like, yeah. And this was all off mic, like just him and I talking. And I I just remember being so embarrassed, but he was so like kind. And it was just a moment that you couldn't have anywhere else. So that, you know, that was awesome. There was one time, too, I tripped going up the altar steps. Oh, fun. Coming back from the preparation of the gifts. So I had the hosts and I spilled them all over. And the deacon gets down because at that time he was the one who went down. And he he kneels down next to me and he just goes, quick, five second rule. (laughs) So we picked them all up (laughs) and they, they were consecrated later, you know. So it was funny how it's like you got these little... Little moments that, again, like I remember, you know, just being like, Jesus really is a cool, a cool God. Sure. You know, and it was shown to me by those guys and, and their sense of humor. This is a big thing. So we have changed, this will be probably one of the last things, but we've changed um, bulletin carriers or companies, what, publishers, that, publishers. Publisher, yeah. yeah. We've changed bulletin publishers uh, to Diocesan, is our, our new one. And so um, there's a lot of uh, room, I think, uh, for advertisers. So we do have, it's in the back of church, um, Adam's Information, our, our advertising rep with Diocesan. Um, he's a great guy, uh, real easy to hang with. So if you want to give him a call, if you're interested in advertising in the bulletin, I know that he would appreciate that very much. So last, uh, Tim uh, mentioned this earlier to ask me to bring up my phone so that way we can yes. talk about... Um, Thank you. I was like, we're forgetting some- something. I'm like, I forget. <laughs> what is it? Thank you. So every week on Monday, we'll, you'll get a, um email blast sure about faith. different events, and it's called Shore Faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, Father Rost is the primary editor of this. Yes. So he introduces, this past week, he introduced um, mm-hmm. it for the second time. This is the second one he's put out. Yeah. And... Whether you just kind of, even if you don't are an parishioner here, maybe you just want some information, check out what's going on at St. Jude, and this is a different way to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, don't click stop, um, even if you get it as a text yeah, message. Yeah, if you get it yeah. as anything with Flocknote, if you don't want to receive a message, do not text stop, because that will shut you off from all of Flocknote forever. Correct. And it's, a, and it's a pain to turn it back on. So what you do is you go into the group on Flocknote and, uh, and just unsubscribe from that group yeah um yeah so and again so we, because we are partnered with saint stephen every some things will be yep. um, bilingual some mm-hmm. things will be just in english some things will just be in spanish so mm-hmm. always be aware of that we are what you yeah. know a welcoming community here mm-hmm. uh, for you know with that and as again we welcomed even our brothers um in faith with our with the jewish faith mm-hmm. Um, with Rabbi Murray, and a lot of their congregation came too. Yes, uh, the church was very packed last week. It was at so it was phenomenal, you know. And, it was, and what I thought was neat about it um, as well was uh, that a lot of the like everybody kind of knew who the uh, people from the synagogue or from the temple were. Yeah, um, and like they all kind of they kind of knew who they were, and it was really cool to watch these two groups kind of form and then like mingle and that came from father ross and rabbi murray like the two of them were talking you know and they're both in i get i don't know if you would call it what what you would call what rabbi was wearing i don't want to say the wrong term but father's in his vestments mm-hmm. rabbi's in his like robe well, it looks like a professor robe yeah truthfully. like yeah. Or, you know what a rabbi and yeah. he add on like, still like the uh and a um, stole looking type thing. Yes, too. and yeah. I forget what that's called. So I was like, whatever. they have so, special names. But they're that we both don't know. they're both sitting there in their in their garb. Yeah, and just talking oh, and no, smiling. You could, yeah, but the difference was, you know, the rabbi has yeah. on a yarmulke, and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so they're talking. But it was just so fun. I, I hit, uh, Rabbi Father and Deacon Dick were in the sacristy at one point, and I told them. I walked in. I said, guys, um, I said, Rabbi, welcome and. Rab- the father's like, this is Tim. I'm like, hi, and I just said, I just want the three of you to know that, like. If none of you today mention the fact that you could say a deacon, a priest, and a rabbi walked into a church, like it's a lost opportunity. They all laughed, and it was a lost opportunity. Nobody said it. So, and thank you to to everybody who came (laughs) um, uh, to the temple um, and listened to Father Ross's. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk on the the first part of the with the covenant and stuff. Um, that was a very fun night. We they the 
people at the temple were very um, happy to have us and, yeah. and we got to wear name tags. That's cool. <laughs> I love but it. But it was fun to meet everybody up there. Yeah. So I think it's just it just shows to to bring a full circle to what we kind of started the podcast with with um if you're not uh, against us you're for us you yeah. know and there are so many things across different faiths different backgrounds that we do have in common you know uh and so it's it's okay i mean obviously we in, in today especially in this time of year with politics and stuff you know everyone is always kind of focusing on like what are what are our differences um, but it's okay to celebrate the things that we do have in common, you know. And so that was a really cool thing this past weekend. Um, and one uh, as well, you know, watching people come together. I guess we'll wrap up with this, um, unless but there's something in Shore, Shore Faith. Faith. Is there more in there? So, and also Keep in Shore Faith, Father Ross had asked questions, um, and then people had responded back to him with answers to which he shared. Ooh, what um, were the questions? Then- what good have you seen lately? What mm. blessings has God brought into your life? And how has God prompted you to share his goodness with others? Nice. Those were from two weeks ago. Okay. Then he shared different um, notes, which we talked about in the bulletin. And then he shared no new questions this week. But if you want to continue to ask, answer those questions, mm-hmm. um, please, you know, send responses back to us mm-hmm. and, or, you know, drop it in a... Yeah. Uh, email or whatever too, yeah. So yeah, I mean, the big, what I was going to say there and then this as well, like, you know, one of the good things, I guess I'll answer the question then, one of the good things I've seen was the family kickoff for Faith Formation. Our family event, we had a great, phenomenal turnout of people from both St. Stephen's and St. Jude's, and everyone came together, had a great evening, had a lot of fun going through the seven sacraments, which is our theme for this year. So yeah, um, we're just seeing a lot of people come together. It's just, it's a really great time to be a parishioner at St. Jude the Apostle and San Esteban. So let's keep it going, um, and we will see you again next week. Um, thank you all so much. Uh, please like, subscribe, share, share, all of our definitely stuff. share, 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 um, share. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and like we share so many memes and things like that, you know, and, that are informational, like for events and stuff. We don't just share those for you to like see them. We share them so that you can share them. We're giving you content to put on your Facebook page, on your Instagram story, um, so that other people in the community can see it. So Definitely. don't don't forget that. Like it's not just like us being like, hey, everybody, look at us. It's also that you can be like, hey come with me. You know, you can be invitational. So um, be sure to check that out. Also, um, a quick note, if uh, we said this 18,000 times over the summer, but just one more time, because we had a couple of phone calls this week from different people. Um, If you know people who are still following our old Facebook page, uh, don't do it. Uh, Unfollow them. Um, Our Facebook page is St. Jude Live. Uh, So please, uh, that's the one to follow. And, And please, like Sarah said, share. So... Um, Let's reveal Jesus together. Know of our prayers for you. And we'll see you next week. See you next week. Peace. Bye.